Hey guys, Brandon here, and today I felt like talking about uh, playing to your classes slash build strengths in terms of uh, farming areas, acquiring wealth, and the single player without pluggy and the method that has worked for me. Now in this video I'll be showing is the farming path I use for my Lightning Fury Amazon. And the build's pretty straightforward in terms of uh, synergies and everything. We know the strengths of the Lightning Fury Amazon. It's AoE lightning damage and single target, da single target damage with charge strike. And with that in mind, I consider areas I know without many lightning immunes and that can be cleared relatively quickly. Now, I like to start in Act 1 with Countess. This is the longest part of the magic find and it, it tends to be worth it because I've gotten a few uh, pull runes, um runes, along with an ist. And also I've yet to encounter her, the countess herself as immune to lightning. I don't think she can be. It's uh, just a matter of avoiding the archers on the way to her. <clears throat> you don't want to waste too much time with those. I you know it's possible to take them out with jab, but we're just trying to, to farm in a reasonable sense. Now, uh, farming the Countess has allowed me to make a uh, stone armor rune ward, <clears throat> which uh, it's made in a worm hide, and it came out fantastic. It's got like 1400 defense. It's great, you know, all resistances. And uh, you make it with the rune, the rune shell, um, pull, lum. And I think it's great armor. And of course, there's better ones, but <clears throat> with her in single player farming, I'm pretty happy with it. And it'll probably stay on her, you know, throughout her. Her, her character's duration. I also like to note that I find it very important to pick up gold and I think that uh, if you can discipline yourself enough to just stay thorough about picking it up <clears throat> you'll be surprised at some of the luck you can have in gambling. Also uh, speaking of gold management I find it's important to not farm in areas where it's very easy for your merc to die often. So unless you have found some really amazing gear for your mercenary, it's something I like to keep in mind, is it can be it can be really expensive, you know, to keep reviving them. And another thing to keep in mind is to make sure you, you have decent maps. In single player your map is saved, so don't be afraid to re-roll it a few times until you find something that is, you know, short and sweet. If you're like me and prefer to use a teleport staff over Enigma, it can cost quite a bit to recharge and um, you can use an ort and a chip gem in the cube to recharge it if you're uh, diligent enough about keeping a good stock of those but without uh, pluggy and stuff you only have so much space so I tend to forego that aspect and uh, also you can see I, I really re need to reroll my Mephisto map I was waiting to matriarch this character since all, uh, all she has left to do is kill Bell. I've been a bit lazy about it but uh, once she's ma matriarch, I'll make her own video on that. Now, uh, after I complete the Countess, I move along to Mephisto. He's easy to take down. I can heal my Merc up, and he has a nice pool of possible drops, Mephisto. It makes him a great place to stop by for gear. And you got to be sure to check the chest behind him. The vampires are cold immune, so it works very well for this build to AoE clear. Just take them out. And use Lightning Fury, and then... Uh, People, a lot of people will say they find high runes in this chest pretty often. I haven't been so lucky, but I mean, it doesn't hurt to check. You're already there. Now, after completing Mephisto, I go to Frigid Highlands, take out Eldritch and Shank. Um, once again, quick, plenty of potential for good stuff. And uh, also make sure you keep your eyes open for anything that, that sells pretty well. Then last on the list, we take out Pindleskin. He's pretty easy to take down. He's not lightning immune too often for me, at least. And if he is, I, you know, I let my Valkyrie and Merc handle him throughout a decoy if I need to. And that buys some time. And he has the potential to pretty much drop anything in the game, and goes down pretty quick. And that's it. Now, occasionally I'll go to the pit to look for socketable gear, but generally I stick to this route. I've already gambled her 
um, a Thunder Gods and a pretty good rare Diadem. So, you know, keep in mind if you're not having great luck with drops and at least you're being, you know, thorough about picking up the gold and stockpiling it, you might just get some luck gambling. And uh, so I hope this sort of shows you my thought process when farming builds, you know, to their strengths. And you can keep in mind for different elements if you want to respec or, you know, create a new character that uh, different areas open up depending on what your character can do. You know, like a whirlwind, a good whirlwind barb can farm the uh, the Traven, Travensel pretty well. And then uh, you got a cold builds, they can do ancient tunnels in the mausoleum since there's no natural cold immunes there. And uh, the treasure class is high enough, you'd get some really end game items in those areas. Huh. Well, I hope this gave you a bit of insight and uh you know maybe even inspire to build who knows and even if not i appreciate you sticking around to listen to my ramblings and um well remember to have fun and you don't have to spend all your time on a you know a sorceress <clears throat> or a hammered in all day not that there's anything wrong with it but y you have other options that you can still you know see those end game goodies with anyway thanks for watching guys all the best